Today, I want to talk about something that could define the future of the beekeeping industry. And it is a message every beekeeper and anyone working in the beekeeping industry should consider listening to. The honeybee industry is one of the most fascinating industry I've ever worked in. Its importance is gigantic. It covers a vast variety of subject matters, from products from the hive like honey and propolis, to food production and healthy ecosystems. As a second generation beekeeper, a honeybee researcher working in the government and multiple universities in the United States, and now a consultant for the beekeeping industry, I'm constantly asking myself, how can we improve the industry that so many many of us depend on? How can we make the lives of thousands of beekeepers a little bit more stable? In doing so, help the bees thrive and achieve their full potential, pollinating the crops we need and at the same time maintaining a health environment and a higher quality of our food production system. What is the one thing that could truly help the beekeeping industry today? I don't know about you, but every time I see the news that bees are dying in alarming rates, my reaction today is completely different than almost 20 years ago when I started as a honeybee scientist. Back then, I felt concerned, but hopeful. Today, I feel, to be honest, embarrassed. Millions and millions of taxpayers' dollars have been spent across different areas. But in my personal view, the return on investment has been minimal for the beekeeper and the industry they depend on. How how better off are the beekeepers' lives today compared with 40, 50 years ago or more? I don't think beekeepers or the beekeeping industry as a whole is better than the older generation at all. And everything I hear around me sounds more like excuses. I know many beekeepers automatically respond with the same familiar answers without giving it too much thought. Umberto, we didn't have the problems we have today in the past. Today we have varroa, bad nutrition, pesticides, blah blah blah, and the list goes goes on and on and on. Sure, I agree, these are real problems, but the truth is that every industry faces challenges. It has been 40 years I'm investing in government and academia to bring solutions to the table, and so far, the solutions keeping beekeepers alive are coming more from commercial beekeepers performing in-house experiments themselves than from solutions coming from academia or the government. Like my favorite author, Thomas Saul, once said, it is hard to imagine a more stupid and more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hand of people who pay no price for being wrong. Think about that for a second. The government and academia, in their attempt to do something about the beekeeping industry's problems, have no consequences for being wrong. They can say whatever they want and nothing changes in their lives. In contrast, the beekeepers listening to them might pay a huge price for the opinions of experts who never had to put food in their own table from money coming from the opinions and guidance they preach. A great example of that is the recent introduction of varroa mites in Australia, where government and academia collaborated to stop the mite spread by the brilliant idea of killing thousands of honeybee colonies in the country. The idea failed, of course, as expected by anyone with real experience with beekeepers, but the concept the consequences of these wrong decisions only affected the beekeepers who lost their bees or, more funny, were blamed for non-compliance with government orders. Why did it fail? The experts, who were supposed to know better, didn't realize that beekeepers often withhold information to protect their operations and reputation. And, as a result, they based their ambitious plan to eliminate varroa mites from Australia on a bunch of unreliable information from the start. Look, it is not my intention here to denigrate government or academic efforts. The great majority are good people doing the work they think is right, and their contributions have surely improved the scientific knowledge about bees tremendously in the last decade. This is not an anti-science rant as some of my academic friends might accuse me again, just like when they call me an anti-vaxxer for questioning the development and production of the COVID vaccine. Boy, I never saw that one coming. Me, a 
polymer vaccine developer myself back in my PhD in a medical school in Brazil being labeled an anti-vaxxer. Unbelievable. The reality is clear. When there are no personal consequences at the stake, you approach a problem differently than when your livelihood depends on the outcome. There is no question about that. And that is what I want to bring attention to. Take a look at my case. As a consultant, if I take money from a company or a beekeeper to help bring a solution to them and I don't deliver a return on investment, I'm done. Academics, on the other hand, receive substantial grant money where the only beneficiaries are themselves and the institutions they work for. I wouldn't have an issue with this if they weren't using helping beekeeping industry as the main argument for securing donations and funding. And when the shit hit the fan, they like to say, oh, that's exactly not my job. So what is missing in the beekeeping industry? When I ask myself this question, what comes to mind? Innovation and the right incentives. The lack of innovation in the beekeeping industry compared to other industries is astonishing. All other industries I know deal with new challenges, not the same problems they faced 40 years ago. Those are solved. What is the difference? Innovation and the right incentives. That's where private companies come in. Private companies must deliver effective progress to survive, while capitalism might might be a controversial term today for whatever reason, I believe it is the best system we have. Though it doesn't work perfectly in every sector, I know that, it is still the most effective system overall. Innovation isn't free. Companies need our support to succeed. Beekeepers, farmers, and even consumers need to recognize that investing in these innovations is an investment in the future of our industry and the strength of our country. When we support private companies, we enable progress. They get the resources to innovate and we get the tools to overcome our challenges which should result in economic growth for the beekeeper. Take Dalen Animal Health for example. They are revolutionizing our industry by bringing the world's first honeybee vaccine to market. This vaccine protects against American fowl brood, an important honeybee disease, and early data even shows cross protection for other threats like the deformed wing virus, indicating the potential of the company to address several honeybee diseases in the future. Private companies like Dalen take enormous risks to bring these solutions to life. Their success depends on delivering products that genuinely improve our lives. If they don't, they won't go too far. That for sure. In the case of the vaccine, because it is a completely new concept, many beekeepers feel uncertain about how to properly evaluate and try the product. While this hesitation is completely understandable, what is concerning is seeing people completely oppose it without even considering considering thinking about it. This kind of mentality is counterintuitive and, I have to say, dangerous for an industry as fragile as the beekeeping industry today. In the case of Dalen Animal Health, many beekeepers are already reporting success using vaccinated honeybee queens in their operations and are pre-ordering more for 2025. Dalen's success with honeybees has begun to spread to other industries, such as the shrimp industry, for example, demonstrating how important it is to support companies that take significant risks to bring innovative solutions to all of us. I'm cheering for them, and time will tell if their innovation will bring return of investment for beekeepers keepers. We all should be paying attention to that. What I'm concerned about, I guess, is that today's companies might not even have a fair chance to demonstrate the effectiveness of their products because people are influenced by misconceptions and the actions of bad players in the past. If this mentality stays, nobody will invest in this industry. But I know what you're thinking. We can't trust companies because of corporate greed and the negative headlines we see in the news. Look, no one is saying we shouldn't carefully evaluate things before making a decision. Of course, we should be cautious when someone wants our money. However, I've noticed a troubling trend where people view all companies as evil and inherently untrustworthy. I've faced my own setbacks in the past. I was once fired after exposing a company's fraudulent practices. But should that experience make me distrust every company I work with now? Of course not. Instead, I've learned to better evaluate products and recognize 
recognize warning signs of deceptive practices. I'm very concerned about this mentality spreading rapidly, especially among the younger generation. I left my country of birth to escape the consequences of excessive government control and anti-capitalism ideologies. Eyewitnesses the effect of that firsthand and they are not pretty. America is the best place to live, trust me. The key is to learn how to navigate in a capitalist world by doing proper research, considering the risk of your choices, and most importantly, taking responsibility for your decisions. This approach will help you feel safer and more empowered and less dependable of government or whatever savior you're looking for. I would love to see more companies investing in bringing innovation to this neglected sector of our food production system. The only way for that to happen is through a shift in mentality among beekeeping industry players to encourage investors and entrepreneurs to bring innovations to all of us. Beekeepers, let's take control of our future, support innovation, embrace the free market as a catalyst for good, be aware of potential bad players, and together we can build a stronger, more resilient beekeeping industry. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys in the next video.